My name is Vahid Chitzos, part of Elite Mastermind Group. Thank you for being here. Go ahead and introduce yourself to everybody. Let us know where you're tuning in from. Okay, now my name is Yanis Miliatsis. I'm from Thessaloniki, Greece, uh, way down in Europe in the Balkans. And uh, I am a sales and performance coach. I am an author of three books and also a CrossFit enthusiast. Awesome, awesome. So listen, I got a few questions that I think is... Uh, related to the circumstances that we're going through right now. How important is it for individuals to learn the skills needed for their profession online now? Because before we used to go to a place, but now it's happening digitally. How important is it for people to go with the trend or the circumstances that we got right now? Well, it depends on how you look at the subject. If you are uh, an, uh, a positive person, you might think is, of this as an opportunity to hone your skills on digital selling and on digital presence. Uh, if you do that, you will be guaranteed success. Uh, if you look at it as a problem, you know, one-to-one, -one, face to face is always better, as people say. Of course it is always better, but in uh, the world we live in now, digital has become the norm. So you have to look at it that way and you have to look at it in a way that it will become an opportunity for you. So I digital skills that. are surely mostly important today, yes. Based on your years of experience with coaching, what are maybe one or two common denominators that keeps coming up for entrepreneurs that holds them back from their maximum potential and their success? What do you see what patterns do you see that keeps coming up? The pattern I see lately in this exact uh, area is uh, the inability to know where to start from. They have a, a, a huge problem knowing where to start the change from. And this is a problem because uh, people have the, have the information, know what to do, but they don't know how to start. So this is when coaching comes in and you start and you start and, uh, you know, um, make the process easy for them and you help them start on the way to uh, to change themselves. Uh, another problem is, of course, the problem that uh, they don't want to change. People are content with doing what they will do, they, will, they were doing all these years back. So having the problem, having the lack of change in their lives is surely uh, another problem that you have to deal with. You have to show them, you know, concrete evidence that they need to change now in the evening. I don't know if you ran into this problem also. No, well, I mean, change is the only constant. If you don't change, you will be changed. It's simple exactly. as that. I mean, it, it, exactly. you, you have no other, I mean, just, I don't know why some people are having a hard time grasping that idea. Now, I do understand that as a human being, we have the tendency to want to find some routine in our lives, and that's what we have the tendency to to do, just like any other spe species on this planet, they like to have that routine. You know, wake up in the morning, go look for food, do this, do that, you know, reproduce, do all these different things, and, and, and that's it. But as a human being, you have the option to disrupt the pattern and have that change because the, the only way we're going to have growth is through change. So here's my next question. How important is it for entrepreneurs to do self-development on a constant basis, even though sometimes they achieve the level of success that they seek out? You know, I think it's uh, the most important thing to have a continuous progress and a continuous program of uh, self-development in place. And uh, there are two times in your life that uh, this is the most difficult to um, uh, follow. The first time is when you are not making it, when times are tough and you still have to invest in your own self-development. That is one of the one time in your life which is the most difficult to invest in self-development and to follow your program. And the second uh, area when it's most uh, difficult, it's exactly what you said. When you have made it, you're okay, and you have to grasp the idea that self-development is a constant in your life, is a matter of, is a lifestyle. It's not something that you do and you stop. Self-development must be, must be like a, a proper diet, a lifestyle. So give me two examples. Let's say I'm stuck, I'm broke, or 
I'm not producing enough monetary compensation. What are some of the tips for there? And then we'll ask the same question for when I have already established some type of a level of success. What are things that I could do? When you are broke, I would tend to focus mostly on uh, actions. You need to do the actions needed to produce income right now. And this is the problem that we see here in Greece very, very uh, many times because people here in Greece, the economy has been bad for the past 15 years or so. It's, uh, things are not as they should be. And uh, the first thing that we do is to grab hold of the basics. What do you need to do now to produce income now? And how many times can you do it per day? And focus on that and only on that in the beginning. And after you, sh you start to focus on uh, reading, self-developing, and um, attending classes, attending workshops, and uh, uh, honing your skills, producing better results for yourself. But uh, if you want to start, you need to produce results right now. So we identify which are the key points with you, that you can produce results right now. And we, you know, pound that nail on the head as hard as we can and as much as we can. Yeah, and, and sometimes it's, uh, I think it's an illusion that a lot of people are looking for a, a quick fix. And I feel like a lot of the challenges that we go through as an individual entrepreneur, business owner, there are not that many quick fixes. I think everything happens gradually. You just got to be on the right path to get to success versus trying to make these um, unrealistic or crazy leaps to the success. So to me, it's like one side, you got to go slow. One side, you got to go fast. What is your opinion on it? Well, uh, I, I totally agree. I totally agree. We live in an age where people treat self-development as fast food. And you can't treat self-development like that. You need to have the patience to see the results afterwards. There is a, this great book uh, from Darren Hardy, uh, the author of uh, a great book that talks a lot about this and says that it needs 27 months to see results while doing small Uh, actions every day and small changes every day and uh, it, it's called the compound effect and I think you must uh, have the patience to do that uh, the trick is that while doing that you need to identify which are the actions you need you, you can do right now that produce some results to keep you going no I agree so have... because some people say you know you go build a habit for 30 60 days I don't I'm not a big buyer of that you could change the direction and trajectory in 30, 60, 90 days. But if you're going to stay on that path, I feel like you need a lot more time. You know? Exactly. You see people go through diet for 30, 60 days and they don't get a life, you know, healthy lifestyle. And we see for entrepreneurs, you know, they go get the coaching, they go take the course, they go to the seminar. For a short period of time, they get the results or they're on the right path, but then they fall off. So to me, it's that quick mentality that I think needs to be changed or modified or, in my opinion, even upgraded. Once it's upgraded, then we have a better way to... What is your favorite self-help book? What's your favorite book? Or top two books? Uh, top two books. Okay, I see you have Napoleon Hill there. So I'm going to say Napoleon Hill's Think and Grow It <laughs> is one of my favorites, okay? <laughs> uh, I got to say, it the book that changed book, my though. life... You got to admit, it is it, a good it, book, it, it, It is a good book. Yes, I have it back in my library. But I have to say, the book that changed my life, even though I don't follow the guy anymore, uh, and I took his certification in his academy, is uh, The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone. Back in 2017, this book changed my life because it taught me uh, that I could do really more actions than uh, I did until now to produce the result that I wanted. The 10X Rule by Grant Cardone is, is a book that... Uh, you know, stuck with me and produced the most change, the more change with me. So why me. you don't follow the guy anymore? I'm trying to see if I can find the book. It's somewhere in my library and it was very, it was handy. Uh, it's here somewhere. It's the one with the yellow cover. Yes, exactly. Yeah, I, it's somewhere around. The, I, can, I can probably find it. See, so why are you not following the guy? It's a good, it's a good concept. Why not follow? It's a good concept. I, I, I do follow the concept. I still follow the concept and I still uh, live by the 10x rule. But I stopped following the guy because 
uh, it did, he didn't have any depth for me as a sales coach. You know, he was talking a lot about the mentality and uh, the philosophy you need to have towards uh, going in on a project full force. And uh, he didn't talk about the details you need, uh, you know, spin selling, disc profiling, uh, having proper questions, all that things that uh, you need to do. And I, I, and I followed him a lot. I, do, I took uh, three certifications from him. Uh, but now I think I've, I have outgrown him, as you say. Well, I mean, but you got to remember, disc is not something simple that a lot of salespeople will, will grasp that fast. It's a lot of work. It's not, I mean, it takes energy. I think it's simple, it's learnable, and it's teachable. It's a skill that everybody needs to learn, but it doesn't, I mean, I, I've never heard of Grant Card. Don't talk about this. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, it, it takes skill, but uh, I think if you, if you master it, if you go through the basics, if you ask me what's the, the second book after 10x rule that uh, changed my life, it, it, it would have to be Spin Selling by Neil Rackman. It's, it's an amazing book, even though it's a little old now, things have changed a little bit. But uh, you have to go through the technical aspect of the sale and not only to go through the mentality of, you know, using brute force to produce results. Yeah, no, I think, I don't know, I have my personal opinion about Grant Cardone. It's, um, you can go with force, you can go with aggression, but I don't think that that is a blanket that you could put for all types of businesses. I feel like exactly. you need to be able to change. And I mean, the way you talk to a five-year-old, the way you talk to a 15-year-old, and the way you talk to a 35-year-old, and the way you talk to a 60-year-old should be different. Yes, maybe there is a common denominator. Maybe you could use some language for all of them, but I would say it's different. So you can't say you go in it with this in every situation, you know, it, it just, you need to have a little bit of a, you need to adapt to the circumstances, I feel like. Exactly. And in, in his own business, I, I truly believe that he does that. He, he truly adapts with the situation. Uh, he, just doesn't, he just doesn't preach that that much uh, in his seminars and in his uh, material. He uses too much brute force. And that's okay to get started with, but after that, you need to learn, as you said, to adapt and overcome any situation by being easy to adapt. There are a lot Sorry. of people outside that have challenge with selling. I'm talking about the, 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 the vocabulary and the process of selling. What, what is your recommendation to those people to kind of unblock themselves from having that stigma of what is selling? Well, the first thing they need to realize that it is that uh, they sell every day, even though they're not salespeople. If they are salespeople, they need to realize that selling is an integral process of the human nature. You do it every day. I, I sell to my children the idea of getting up and going to school every day. If I don't do it right, I, I will have problems, okay? <laughs> and the second thing they need to realize is that selling needs preparation. You need to be prepared. Uh, uh, you need to have prepared scripts, you need to have prepared material so that you can make your life easier. No matter what you sell, if you sell services, things are a, bit, a little bit different. If you sell uh, uh, material and uh, objects, these things are even. Sorry, my English are not, is not that great because I'm from no, Greece. No, but it made sense. It, it, it's, it, it's clear. I understood it. I understood it. Okay. Because, so, I mean, I have a different idea. I know there's a lot of individuals that they say, Selling is more like educating and sharing what you believe with somebody else. And if the products or services does what they need to be doing or does what it's supposed to do, then there shouldn't be that much selling. If I'm selling you a Toyota Prius that gets, you know, or selling you a Tesla, right, without putting gas, it goes, you know, two, three hundred miles. You just got to charge it. It's better for, for, you know, it's better for environment and everything why do I still need to sell it to you? Exactly. That's presenting. That's not selling. <laughs> That's so presenting. So presentation could be in a form where you're not selling? No. Uh, the presentation might be in a form that you like not selling. It should be well uh, structured to have also benefits 
not, and not only characteristics, but uh, you, going down the line, you will have to come to the point to help the other guy make a decision that, he, that it is good for him, as I say. Selling is helping the other guy make a decision that is good for him. And uh, you don't have to uh, get around that. When times comes and uh, he starts, you know, selling objections, you need to go around that and you need to convince the, the guy with uh, logical uh, requirement, requirements that uh, what you sell, it's right for them. I agree with that 100% because I've seen that happen in so many times or if you have prepared enough or if you know your products in and out, like you know the details about it, you come off not as a salesperson. I feel like you come off as a professional and they seek you. Like CPAs, attorneys, doctors. I mean, a doctor has got to sell you on the medicine. You know, an attorney has got to sell you on what you, how you're going to go present your case. So to me, it's like in all aspects of life, there is selling. It's just that some people have got the wrong idea about selling at some point or they were taken advantage by somebody else and they thought that that would sell. Exactly that. Uh, most of the people that have the wrong idea about selling is exactly because of that. Because who hasn't been taken advantage by, by an unprofessional salesperson that uh, tricked him to buying something that he doesn't need? And uh, then you have the stigma. Most, most of the people don't write on their business card salesperson. You know, they, ha they write consultant or something like that, which is, excuse my language, but it's total nonsense. Okay, you sell. That's what you do, whether you are a doctor or a lawyer or something. If you do it professionally enough and you have the right attitude towards it and the right attitude towards the person you are uh, uh, servicing, and uh, then you, you will have no, absolutely no problem, absolutely no problem in uh, appearing and being truly professional in your work. Uh, I have even declined many times sales to people that I didn't want to sell them something that uh, it wasn't right for them at the time. And uh, that's the spirit in, in which you build relationships and in which you build your image. Here in Greece, I live in a town which is a million people. If you, if you don't act professional and, uh, you, and you aren't a professional, uh, pretty soon you won't have anyone to sell. Especially in small towns, though, those who act professionally uh, need to realize that it's, it's the only way to survive as a salesperson. I agree with that 100%. Listen, I wanna, so how do people find you? Well, uh, they can find me in my business page, uh, www.bizman.gr. It's in Greek. Uh, it's in Greece. And uh, from my Instagram right here, Yanis Miliatsis. My last name is uh, all eyes, M-I-L-I-A-T-S-I-S. -I -I and uh, in all social media. Awesome. Listen, I want to thank you so much for taking this time and being with us this morning. Hopefully we'll thank get you to do too, more because there's a lot more to cover. So I appreciate it. Stay safe. Thank you. Thank you very much for an invitation. Bye-bye. Talk to you later. Bye-bye.